Hello everybody, Christian from Treasure Town here, and today we're going to be speaking about the 1935S Peace Dollar, going over its history, the values, why it gets brought back in 34 and 35, and then this specific one, what condition is it going to be worth a lot more in, and then the VAMs, which are basically little varieties where you can look pretty closely at some of the coins, and they'll have some of these VAMs that make them worth quite a bit more. Then we'll also cover some mint errors, but in terms of the specifics of the coin, it was initially made in 1921, um, until 1928 when they were fulfilling what was called the Pittman Act, which basically the U.S. sends a bunch of silver minted in the states at cost to alleviate concerns that Britain could not sort of guarantee their currency and that they didn't have the silver in reserve. Um, the coins, this one is a sp uh, key date, but you can see the key dates below. Um, and the design was a peace design because it was just following World War One. Now, at this point, World War II is heating up, and I don't think that it was the reason that they stopped um, minting the coins, but certainly wasn't fair to be minting peace dollars in the late 30s and early 40s. Um, the coins were mainly circulating in the western United States, so this was made in San Francisco, that's the S mint mark, and it would have circulated nearby, um, and they brought them back briefly in 1964, but melted all of them down before they could get out the door, because people were just going to resell them. But in terms of this specific one, um, the legislation that enables these is the U.S. realizes that silver is super cheap, but they're having these standards for dollars and they realize they can buy a bunch of silver in the open market, coin it into silver and make a bunch of money known as what's seigniorage, which is basically, you know, they're paying, often they would be paying for silver with silver dollars um, at much lower cost. And then they were able to just get that in between what the silver costs, what it costs to mint, and then a bunch of dollars are created for the United States government. Um, and the Silver Purchase Act of 1934, um, has the treasury buying silver until either the value of silver to gold in the treasury is one to three or the market price of an ounce of silver reaches a dollar and 29 cents um, the 1935s coins themselves are released mostly into circulation in 1949 and 1950 um, though they are released before that as well sort of just leading up into that and there's very little collector interest in the peace dollar i mean it was just like a regular circulating coin and people were focused on whether it was world war ii or just other things there was not that much collecting of these going on um, and similar to a lot of the San Francisco mint dollars, the strike quality was really not great. So they didn't have the best minting practices. They would often be stored in those bags where they would bounce around. And there were relatively few minted at 1,964,000. But um, the coins are slightly better in the XF and AU ranges. In mint state, they really kick up though. Mint state 63 is a $400 coin. And it's an example of where every incremental grade makes a really big difference. So in some uh, coins, there's like not much of a difference between 64 and 65, and then it gets expensive in 66. Here, every single one is going to make it a lot better. So if you have a good eye and can cherry pick a problem-free, not clean coin, there's a lot of room to do well. Um, mint state 67 is the highest that these are found in, which is pretty good. A lot of the estimates, there's none where they get that high mint state 67. One thing to look for is the four rays versus the three rays. It's not like a huge deal, but the four rays are slightly rare and will be a little bit more expensive. Um, this is on the reverse by the mint mark, but if you can see three rays below one, that's the normal one. Four rays is slightly better. Um, the one to look for a little bit closer is going to be the double die reverse. So you can see this because there's going to be a spread in the leaves. You can see some clear shelving sort of all through the leaves on the back of the coin. Um, in AU55, it's going to be a $200 find. Mint State 63, the values are a little less, you know, pronounced, but still some nice increases, 500 bucks for that, 2000 for Mint State 65. Um, the, in terms of some of the mint errors, we were able to find a few. This had a planchet flaw, so there were some sort of impurities in the metal, it looks like, and this sold for $185. I think the planchet flaw made it so that it was a details coin, but just sort of something to be on the lookout for. That one didn't make it too much more valuable, but there could be something like one of uh, the coins that was broad struck in 1921. That was a $7,750 coin. Basically, the collar was not retaining the coin properly, and it expands after the strike. Or there uh, in 1935 in Philadelphia, there's this rim burr. It kind of looks like a lamination error, but it's a pretty expensive find, $1,800. So 
again, something to certainly be looking out for. But really here is just going to be the double die reverse fam, as well as the minor variety of looking for the four rays because those are better. And then being very aware at what uh, condition you're buying the coins because if you can make an upgrade, it's going to really be worth doing so. Thanks for watching the video. I'd encourage you to like the video, comment, and make sure to subscribe to my channel. And I also have Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and some other social media platforms. You can also go to my main channel website, treasuretownyt.com, to learn more about the channel and sort of stay in contact. I also will eventually host all of these videos on coinsmetalscards.com, which will be both news, marketplace, and coin information. I do have the goal of eventually getting pretty much every U.S coin, date, mint mark, denomination on the channel with a similar video to the one that you just watched, and that will likely all be hosted there. Uh, and then I also have treasuretowncoins.com, which is sort of my coin dealing wing, coin dealing only entity that is a little bit less focused on content production. So thank you so much, and I'll look forward to seeing you on some of my other videos. I also have videos that are not just the date uh, mint mark denomination recap in this format, uh, so you can check some of those out, and I'll yeah have fun seeing you there.